Welcome to Bitter Mommy's Club Areola. Our specials tonight. Our specials tonight are very special. Special. <laughs> Bitter Mommy has no time for dilly dallying, so don't ask for much. Jump! Just be happy with what you get. And don't! Don't make any mess on the sofa. Is this yours? Is this yours? Nothing in this house belongs to you. Remember that. Tonight we have several details that are worth mentioning. The babysitter will be here soon. And please, be nice to your Uncle Charlie. He's paying for all this, you know. Have you cleaned yourself yet? How it's going to be. I wasn't prepared. I said I wasn't prepared for this. enough. I'm not answering that phone one more time today. Don't ask me any questions. Don't ask me any goddamn questions. Do I look like the operator? Children are supposed to be seen and not heard. Don't speak, even when you are spoken to. Thank <laughs> you. 
People in here now, name went wrong. We have it all gone up. It's all paper up. It's all got we, we, we pay for the joint. We got a lot of people coming in here. Don't you even worry about a thing. We got the cops paid off. We got the virus and everything. Don't worry about it. We got a bucket of water. We aren't going to let anything happen. We got everyone paid off. We got to run. Just go and knock on the door. Just have a good time. Just come on in. Just come on. We got Miss Sheila and Gig and her vote. Stop, stop. They're going to come in here and do another for you. They're going to do another. They're going to do another for you. They're going to be dancing. There's going to be lots of fun. It's going to be a joyful. It's going to be a joyful celebration. That's what we're going to have. We're going to have a joyful celebration. A joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Let's make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, it's going to be a party. We're going to have a party in here. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a celebration. We're looking for a good time. Everyone, just come on. Just kick off your just kick off your shoes. We're going to have a dance time. Just kick up your knees. Just kick up your knees. Just start moving. Just start moving. Just start moving. Just start grooving around. Grooving around. Grooving around. Oh, A party. I just love a party. I mean, I, this is a wonderful thing. I've been such a long, I'm very dark and depressing time. It's so long. I just can't tell you how excited. I mean, it's, like you're, it's a gift. You're giving us a gift by having this wonderful celebration. We're all just so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is so wonderful. <laughs> I can hardly stand. real pretty you look real pretty tonight I don't know if you've ever uh, uh, experienced this before but I think when I look into your eyes I've seen a kind of a feeling that I know I never felt before and I hope that you can enjoy the fact that I'm feeling it yeah the, I mean, I, I, it's great yeah you're beautiful really. They can improve on perfection, but I don't believe that's true.
So there I was, back in the pawn shop and in a rage. I said, you give me back my mother's bustier, bucker. Well, he'd hardly even try to get up and get it. So I just reached into my uh, mother, uh, my uh, pocketbook. I pulled out my father's gun and I shot him. Of course, that's the way it's always been with me, though. I've been sitting on a fence one way or another my entire life. You know, the thing is, you gotta look after yourself in this world, because there sure as hell ain't no one else who's going to. Like, for instance, if I had hocked that gun before I hocked the bustier, I never would have gotten the bustier back because I wouldn't have had the gun, you see? Because the thing is, I had a party to go to. So I went down there, and I just said to him real nice, I said, give me back that bustier. He just didn't even get up to get it, so... I can't help it. You know what, I don't even know why I trusted him in the first place. I guess it's because he had such big nipples. They say that people with big nipples, you know, maybe it was because I figured he must have a strong maternal instinct, you know, because no one's nipples are that big naturally, at least not a man's, so he must like to have something hanging off of him, either that or he just sits and squeezes at himself all day long, and that doesn't seem natural to me, you know. Teats have always fascinated me, though, I have to say. You know, even since, you know, what's her name? That girl that lost her little sheep. What's her name? Little Bo Peep. She lost a bunch of sheep. But how do, they, how do you lose a bunch of damn sheep in the first place? Likely as not, she wasn't paying any attention to them damn sheep anyway. She was probably sucking off the nipples on some fence somewhere. But, you know, that's just a perfect example of the duality of life. I can't help but thinking if he had normal size ones, he'd be alive today. Isn't that a shame? It must be some kind of cautionary tale, but all I know is I got my bustier back, and I went to that party, and I had a good time. thing to do is try to avoid smelling natural if you can because 
You just never know if you can create the scent or you can borrow the scent or you can buy the scent, then you have control over the scent. And the most important thing is to have control over the scent because then you can tell. If they don't like it, it's their problem. It's not your problem because you chose it. Do you understand? It's a very simple thing. You shouldn't be afraid of it. You shouldn't be ashamed of it. Just smell, really. Just It's very important to smell. With conviction, you know. I are young and fine. I'm a bit of a boy. I'm a good man, I'm a good man, I'm a good man. We are going down to the pile. My cousin is up for a different time. I'm going to put up the pile. 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 I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but did you see what just happened? That poor girl just fell in the bay. No one even cares, no one cares that that poor girl just drowned. It's a terrible thing. It is a terrible thing to sit and watch a girl drown. You feel so helpless. It reminds me of, remember that time? 
That time with little old what was her name? Ruth Ann. Oh, my sister. She used to take care of that poor little girl, Ruth Ann. That girl, she couldn't walk. She's, what do they call it when you can't use your arms or your legs? Uh, quadriplegic. Now, she was a quadriplegic girl, but they had her in that wheelchair and they had her on that oxygen. She could talk sometimes, real good. It'd be like sort of a... It was sort of like Superman, you know. Sometimes she could say things and sometimes she couldn't, just depending on which way that squeeze box machine was going. Well, anyway, one day my sister was over there taking care of Ruth and she was in her wheelchair and she said, I'd like to... Whoa. So she just took her out. Now, the thing was, Ruth Ann didn't have very much money on account of, you know, they don't have good health care over there in Baltimore. And she didn't have much money, so she had this wheelchair, and only one of the uh, wheels had rubber around it. The other one had rubber, and one was just metal, you know? And so she sort of had to kind of, she was weebly and wobbly. Now, if she was in the living room, my sister just, she just go round in circles, really, because with that uneven wheelchair, she couldn't go left, she could only go right. So she'd go round in circles, but she wanted, Ruth Ann wanted to take a walk. So she took her outside the house and she was wheeling, you know, and when she was trying to go straight, she kind of had to compensate, you know, on that one side that had to, and it was real hard on her. She had terrible back problems because of it. It was real hard on her, so she took her down there, compensate. Now, the thing was, when Ruth Ann was going out, she'd take her now. She didn't have but three hairs on her head. Just three hairs. Which is really, it's, lu it's lucky, really, because if you have three hairs, you can make a braid. If you have two, you can only make a twisty, and you know, odds are it's just gonna come up undone unless you have some sort of gel or something, and even then it doesn't look that pretty. So she, fortunately, she had three hairs and she braided them together. Now the thing is she couldn't put a rubber band on it because the rubber band, it was just too much. It would sort of twist it all up. So she had a little string. So there she was, a compensating down the road with her braid and her little flailing off behind her head, and they got down there to the harbor. Well, they got down to the harbor, and it was real pretty down there, and she said, Ruth Ann, would you like a snow cone? Ruth Ann said, or, you know, maybe they call them an, an icy or something, you know, something frozen to cool yourself off on a hot summer day. And Ruth Ann said, <gasps> yes. You know, and sometimes if she didn't even feel like talking, she could just bat her eyes. One time meant no, and twice meant yes. She said yes and batted her eyes because she was so excited about that snow cone. So my sister just went over to get her that snow cone and she wasn't even thinking. She just left Ruth Ann sitting there on that wheelchair. Cause where the hell can a quadriplegic go on a hot summer day? And she was just sitting there enjoying the sun. Well, the thing about it was that that embankment there on the harbor, I had a little bit, it was not, it was sort of went out over the water. You could hear the water splashing underneath the lappity lap, lap, lap. And all of a sudden, uh, I guess the, the angle was just right, and Ruth Ann started just a curving down that platform, and she went over the edge, and she was strapped in that wheelchair, went right down to the bottom, and she drowned, ladies and gentlemen, she drowned. But the thing is, she didn't die in vain because her family sued the city of Baltimore and they put in blockades, little ramparts in there, so those people can't just go, you know, people can't just go riding their wheelchairs into the bay and drowning every now and then. So I guess in, her death wasn't in vain. She, she had a real reason.
Oh, <laughs> 